of land for that purpose. We have invited educational institutions of, of repute to set up their campuses in the higher learning, in the various professional disciplines. We expect this facility eventually to emerge as a top level facility on the lines of Cambridge and Oxford. Besides physical infrastructure, we also need to build a talent pool in terms of teachers and researchers who will be responsible to carry out quality teaching learning programs. We, are, we all are too well aware of challenge of brain drain. Thousands of our scholars leave their homeland for better opportunities in the West. We have to arrest the this shift of talent outside the outside the country. In order to do that we need to create opportunities. We in our own institutes of higher learnings. Another disturbing trend is that the top minds are no longer attracted to education or teaching profession. We need to create such working culture and facilities that the top researchers and scholars are motivated to join the mainstream education, mainstream education, then opting for other profession avenues. Social and economic transformation has made our social fabric very competitive and complex. For this we need simple laws to easy to easy to understand and comply with. This will make the life of common men, common men less cumbersome. Knowledge is a meaningless unless it, it benefits the common man. Lawmaking is a serious business which should not be left to the legislature alone. Academicians, lawyers, social organizations, etc. should come forward to give valuable input in the process of lawmaking. Sir, these were some of stray thoughts that came to my mind in the context of today's discussion. I would however look forward to the views of eminent scholars, professionals who are participating in this conference. With these few words, I would like to thank Honorable President of India for visiting Haryana and his guidance. I also thank the OP Jindal Global University, particularly the Chancellor, Shri Navi Jindal, for inviting me <coughs> on this occasion. I will like to conclude with a few line from Mashelkar and I quote, a society that gives an opportunity for education to everyone, that has inspiring teachers, that has philanthropic industries, that has a visionary leader in all walks of life and that gives talent every opportunity to reach its real potential becomes truly empowered." Unquote. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your address. I now have the honor to request Sri Jagannath Pahadia, Governor of the State of Haryana, to deliver his address. Honorable President of India, Sri Ramakarji Sahib, Sri Punishta Haryana, Sri Sardaji, Union Minister Sri Rajuji, Professor Lauren Ravelji, Sri Naveed Jindalji, Chancellor of the OP Jindal University, Honorable Srimati Saviti Jindalji, and all the members of the Jindal family, the Speaker of the SMG, Sarmaji, MPs, MLAs, and other dignitaries, dear students, ladies and gentlemen. I am extremely happy to be here on the joyous occasion of the International Conference on the Future of Indian Universities, Comparative, Perspective, or Higher Education Reforms for a Knowledge Society at OP Jindal Global University. It is an extraordinary event for this university 
at the outset, I extend my heartiest welcome to Honorable the President of India, Honorable Sri Mukherjee Sahib, and other distinguished guests on their visit to the state of Haryana to grace the occasion. The occasion has become greater still with their presence. I also express my heartiest gratitude to Honorable President for having agreed to spare some time to grace this August occasion. Your Majesty Presence not only makes the moment memorable, but serves the faculty, staff, and the students as a source of inspiration. Sir, it is a matter of great pride that the strong state of Haryana, which is just 1.3% of the country's geographical area and 2.09% of the country's total population has made tremendous progress in every field of human endeavor. Within a short span, Haryana has visualized the dream to become the education hub of the country in order to encourage private players in this field, the Haryana Private Universities Act 2006 was enacted. As a result, many universities and institutions, including this university, have been established with their aim towards the imparting higher education of international standards. Sir, Haryana is thus contributing immense towards promoting technological engineering and allied technical education for the youth, bringing home not only to the state of Haryana, but also to the whole of the country. Besides our institutions, the number of universities has been the 31 in the state. I am sure OP General Global University would emerge as a role model in shaping the students' lives by providing them quality education and enabling and equipping them to take global competition head on. It would provide all the modern facilities as per the requirements for each discipline to meet the ever-changing demand of the students and are in conformity with those of best institutions in the country. Sir, I also take this opportunity to congratulate the university for organizing this three days international conference and getting prominent educationists from the country and abroad to share their knowledge and expertise. I am sure that fruitful deliberations would take place among the delegates attending the conference from India and abroad besides sharing their experience and knowledge. At the end, I once again thank Honorable President of India, Sri Mukherjee Zai, and other distinguished dignitaries, I wish this university all success in the mission of developing quality education. I wish the conference all success and the students, staff, and faculty a great, great future. Thank you very much, sir. The OP Jindal Global University is greatly honored and privileged to welcome the President of the Republic of India, Sri Pranab Mukherjee, in our midst. I now request the President of India to inaugurate this conference with an inaugural address. Honorable Governor Sri Jagannath Paharia, Honorable Chief Minister Sri Bhupinder Singh Hoda, Union Minister of Human Resource Development, Sri Pallam Raju, Sri Kuldeep Shatma, Distinguished Speakers of Haryana Assembly, Chancellor of the University, Young MP Sri Navin Jindar, Sri Jitendra Malik, Member of Parliament from Shonapath, Madam Shavitri Jindal, Member of State Legislative Assembly, Professor Mrs. Lauren Rubel, Provost Indiana University, United States of America, Vice Chancellor Professor Rajkumar, Professor Y.S.R. Murthy, 
Professor R. Sridharshan, distinguished academicians, beloved students, ladies and gentlemen. It's indeed a privilege for me to be present on the occasion of the inauguration of the conference on future of Indian University, comparative perspectives on higher education reforms for a knowledge society. I am thankful to OP Jindal Group of University for hosting this conference. This conference, I believe, could not have been organized at a more appropriate time. The need to make a critical reform of our educational system is more compelling now in many ways than at any time before. There is an urgent need to raise the quality of teaching, faculty and research in our universities. There could be no second opinion on the critical role that education plays in the development of a nation. It is the most powerful tool that can spawn societal changes and transform the economic fortunes of a country. In the words of Dr. Benjamin Franklin, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. I compliment OP Jindal Global University for choosing a subject of such topical relevance and importance for the country for this conference is being held today. I take this opportunity also to pay our most respectful homage to late O.B. Jindal, a leading and innovative industrialist of this country in whose fond memory this institution is established. Ladies and gentlemen, there are several important reasons why we need to focus our attention on the educational sector. I hardly need to emphasize that we have a young population and the demographic profile of our country can be a boon. It would be a boon if we are able to harness their potential, but our failure to do so and channelize their productive energy may visit us with terrible negative consequences. The challenges can be daunting. By the year 2020, the average age of an Indian will be 29 years, which will be much lower than average age of 40 years in the United States, 46 years in Japan, and 47 years in Europe. Over two-thirds Indians will be of the working age group by 2025. These statistics make it imperative for us to focus on the educational needs of our young population. We must recognize that the demographic dividend can only be reaped if the young population is provided higher education, training, in vocational skills. At the end of the 11th five-year plan, India had 659 degree awarding institutions and 33,023 colleges. These numbers are indeed impressive, but many more would have to be established. They are required to meet the growing demands of higher education, especially in the rural areas of the country, and to cater the need of 1.2 billion plus population of this country. There are several areas in the country far removed from any college or university 
this has led to a low rate of enrollment in the higher education. Only around 7% of those aged between 18 to 24 years join the higher education in India, while it is 21% in Germany and 34% in United States of America. Increased access would not only help expand the base of the educational pyramid, but also promote inclusiveness. It can also be promoted by making education affordable to the marginalized sections of the society. Student aid programs like scholarships, education loans, self-help schemes should therefore be liberalized to the deserving students. Ladies and gentlemen, we lack universities that can provide quality education that meets the global benchmarks. Even taking the risk of reputation, as I have mentioned this fact on several occasions in my address to the university, but I would like to state that it is a matter of grave concern. There is not a single Indian university in the top 200 universities in the world as per an international survey of universities. This position is not at all acceptable. This calls for serious introspection with educational standards that fall short of international benchmarks. India would be grievously handicapped in the hardly competitive world. The National Knowledge Commission in its report in 2006 described the falling standards of the higher education in the country as, I quote, a quiet crisis that runs deep, unquote. We cannot wait any longer before we take the remedial action. We do not have the luxury of time. We must promote a culture of excellence in our educational system. I can suggest a concrete step in this direction. That would be to identify one, independent, one department in every university and transform it into a center of excellence. To achieve this, the Ministry of Human Resource Development, University Grants Commission, and the university concerned will have to work together in close co collaboration. Amongst the academic challenges that we face is a large number of vacancies in the university. In central universities alone, the vacancy of teachers is around unacceptable level of 38%. This has to change. We cannot expect to impart quality education without qualified teachers who are most equipped to provide guidance to students and encourage research. Ladies and gentlemen, there are several steps that we may need to take to achieve qualitative improvement in our educational system to make it as good as the best in the world. For this, the Ministry of Human Resource Development University Grants Commission, University, and all stakeholders should work out a common approach. Focus should be on quality, affordability, and accessibility, the three cornerstones of the higher education policy. Private sector should be encouraged to play a larger role in our educational institute system. Some of the top universities of the world, you mention anyone, Harvard, Yale, all of them have been built up on the initiative of the private sector. In India, the private sector has left its mark in the several key sectors like health, transport, and financial service. I see no reason why the Indian private sector cannot replicate its efforts in the higher education sector as well. But care should be taken to ensure 
that there is no dilution in the standard. Here again, I take this opportunity of congratulating OP Jindal group of universities to take the lead. Affiliated colleges enroll about 37% of all students and are at the core of our higher education system. Affiliating universities should, however, exercise due diligence to ensure that adequate curricular and evaluation systems are adopted by such colleges. We should also be able to harness the power of the technology to promote education. Classroom teaching in one university could be transmitted to the benefit of a wider student population in other universities using the modern technology. For instance, lectures of the eminent professors could be transmitted to educational institutions situated far away from the main towns and cities using the facility offered by the National Mission of Education through information and communication technology. National Knowledge Network, which aims at the connection of the knowledge generating institutions through high speed <coughs> broadband network has made substantial progress. We have been able to link 955 out of the 1,500 institutions to this network. The balance one-third institutions should be connected on priority basis to bring its benefit to remote areas. Our universities would also benefit 